From Nashville's WSM Radio, the original home of the Grand Ole Opry, this is a Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. Hey, it's Charlie Matos, and welcome to our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast. Friday, April the 7th, Rhonda Vincent and her brother Darren Vincent would join us, both members of the Grand Ole Opry, Rhonda with her band The Rage. Darren Vincent, of course, is a member of Daily and Vincent, and they would be performing together on the Grand Ole Opry, Rhonda, Darren, and the Vincent family. What a special night that was, and they joined us in studio to preview that and share some wonderful family memories. Enjoy our Coffee, Country, and Cody podcast with Rhonda Vincent and her brother Darren Vincent. Hey, a little after 9 o'clock, 9.03 in America's Music City. Uh, great to see Charles Eston in the studio on his way to the Grand Ole Opry with you, Kelly Sutton. Mm-hmm. The full lineup is Daly and Vincent. Right. Yes. And we have Vincent and Vincent. Woo! The two duos. And then there's Starry Starry Night, Vincent. That's right. Don McLean. Daly and Vincent, Jeannie Seeley, who will add to her list a record number of appearances as a Grand Ole Opry member. 5,275, I think, tonight. Uh, her I think. husband, Gene Ward, he keeps, is the official scorekeeper. He's the keeper. <laughs> I walk in and I see Mr. Gene. I said, where are we at, Mr. Gene? And he tells me and I write it on a post-it note and take it out to the podium. Yes. <laughs> Lindsay L., it'll be great to see her back on the stage yes. of the Opry. It, it, she's going out with Shania, did you tell me? Yeah, she's opening some dates for Shania. I think she's doing Seattle and then uh, some of the Canadian tour stops later mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Shania and Lindsay L. back home in Perfect. Canada. Wow. Yeah, for sure, you uh, betcha. We mentioned Char- <laughs> Charles <laughs> Eston, Riders in the Sky, Stephen Curtis Chapman. Been a really emotional week for mm. him as he spoke at the funeral service for Catherine Kuntz, <laughs> the yeah. principal or the head of the Covenant School who was killed in, the, in that tragic shooting. And Stephen Curtis is at the Opry tonight. Gary Mule Deer is there to bring a little levity to this Good Friday and Easter weekend. And Ricky Lee Skaggs in Kentucky Thunder going to take us home. Uh, you used to get a paycheck from him, didn't you, Darren? 11 years worth, yeah. He Did bought you? my house. I appreciate it, Ricky. Thank you. <laughs> A nice house. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and Rhonda, I was just with you Tuesday night. That's as right. you opened the Tuesday night opera. We sure did. Excited to be here in Nashville for the week. And uh, you share a night, that particular night, a historic night in the history of the Grand Ole Opry, the Tennessee State University Aristocrat, oh, yeah. a band's marching band, like 125 strong, <laughs> played the Grand Ole Opry. We were like, listen, what is that? What is going on? There, are, There's musicians everywhere. You know, they have over 200 members. Ooh. So I don't know if the freshmen got cut or who oh. got cut. <laughs> Not everybody got Not to cut. Not everybody was there. Or, it seemed like everyone was there. Or maybe it was based on grade <laughs> point average i'm not sure but the tuba section engraved on the tubas it said silver thunder oh wow. and they were bringing it in lockstep i'm telling you it was really terrific and they won a grammy right they're the only Two grammys. Yes, the only marching band to ever win grammys mm-hmm. oh my goodness isn't that incredible that is amazing well we're you so never lucky. know when you i said to the audience that <laughs> night i said when you walked in here you did not expect this to happen at the grand Ole Opry. <laughs> Because we're always full of surprises, right? That's right. I love it. I love it. <laughs> when was the first time you remember playing the Grand Ole Opry? Well, the the story around that, we played, We were playing Silver Dollar City. We punched the time card. We were staff musicians at Silver Dollar City. Branson? Branson, Missouri. Yes. In Branson. Yes. Okay. So here we are, our family, Sally Mountain Show, Darren's little and... and uh, I'm still little. Yeah. Still, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little boy, sweet little boy. Uh, anyway, we're playing. It's a pouring down rain day. You know, and here we played five one-hour shows a day from eight to six. And, this and are partic- there other siblings? Yeah. Well, Brian wasn't. He was a baby at that time. Okay. So it was mom and dad and and Darren and I. And so we're playing staff musicians, uh, pouring down rain. No, most of the bands when it was pouring, I mean literally pouring all day long, they would kind of sit there and wait till the rain to pass before they played. Dad said, No, we're they're paying us to play. We're going to play our shows. No one. The seats were empty, <laughs> pouring down, and so. Um, but we, we played all of our shows that day. The next week, my dad gets a call from Hal Durham. He was the general manager of the Grand Ole Opry. Oh, I loved Hal Durham. And mis- he said, Mr. Durham said, Mr. Vincent, I would like to invite you and your family to be on the Grand Ole Opry. And we just met Charlie Leuven. Dad assumed Charlie had recommended us. And he said, well, we want to thank Charlie for recommending us for the Opry. And Hal said, Charlie had nothing to do with this. My dad said, well, how did you know about my family? And he said, well, last week, while your family was playing in the rain, 
I was on vacation with my family around the corner listening. And we learned a very great life lesson that day. And that's the first time that the Sally Mountain Show got to be on the Grand Ole Opry. And that was because my dad said, we're playing. I don't care if it's raining or what it is. And you play your heart out. And that was a... You entertain. Yeah. Yeah. So... What was the name of Charlie Daniels' book? Never Look at the Empty Seats. That's oh, it. Oh, that's a great... T- yeah, I love yeah. that. It's the truth. <laughs> yeah. 100% so, the truth. Can I tell you a great Hal Durham story? Please. Yeah. This involves your former colleague, Ralph Emery. Uh, Walter Ralph Emery, Country yes. Music Hall of Famer, Disc Jockey Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. I said, how, when you were programming here at WSM Radio, I mean, what do you tell Ralph Emery? I mean, he's Ralph <laughs> Emery. When you sit down in an air check session, what do you tell Ralph? Well, Bill, it usually revolves around something like, uh, Ralph, do you think it's possible you could make it to work on time? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because uh, <laughs> Al had that rich voice. I loved his speaking voice. Uh, you know, I think that was probably the first time, I know it was the first time that I met you, Darren, was, uh, I think you guys came to Fox 17 and played when I was still there. Of course, when Ralph decided that it was way too early for him to get up, which was <laughs> three months into the show that bore his name. Whoa. It was the Ralph Emery <laughs> show in the mornings right. and we were three months in and he was like oh, i don't know why i decided to get up early again <laughs> charlie chase get in here you're pinch hitting so charlie was with me for eight years but i i remember daily and vincent coming in and i remember y'all pulling the bus around back and coming in early and it was so much fun and and the energy that you brought that early in the morning because again it's one of those you're loading in at 4 30 or 5 a.m to play live on the air on fox 17 local i remember that and you and you were like beaming, so beautiful and so upbeat. And <laughs> it was I coffee. Thought, it was how all coffee. How can you be this happy of a morning? <laughs> She's the perfect wife you want to have. <laughs> Let me tell you, growing up, he was not beaming in the morning. Oh, I bet. <laughs> growing, he was the guy that could not get out of bed. Come on, was running. It? My grandmother would fix him a cheeseburger. Right. A cheeseburger with ketchup only, yep. and a Mountain Dew, and a bag of Doritos, and he would literally grab it and run to the bus, and barely, <laughs> barely made it to the bus every morning. I so. can't imagine what your cholesterol was like in high school. It's perfect. <laughs> cheeseburger every morning. This right, is, Eric. <laughs> this the breakfast of champions. <laughs> this is happening in Green Top. Green Top, Missouri. Your home, and how far is that from Branson? You talked about. Oh, that's Branson. probably five hours, yeah, six, six hours. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So it depends yeah. on how fast you drive. All right. <laughs> so Johnny and Carolyn, your parents' names. Yeah. Yes. Correct. That's as far as we know. Yes. And you know. <laughs> Brian, you mentioned Brian. It, it, Brian's listening. He's on his way from Chicago with his family right now. Okay. All of the family is converging and on. on her way, yeah. yeah, and mom's and on her way with Randy. So, so what Sally are we doing? made it last night. What are we doing at the Opry as it's specific to the Sally Mountain show? And when did it go away? And then when did you two start pr- to pursue individual careers outside the family? I mean, that's Sally all. Mountain. It's a, a lot of different. I, I'm not sure. The years. I mean, it's over the years. Really. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we grew up in a musical family. It was a way of life. So. And your father has passed. My father passed eight years ago, I think yeah. it was. Eight years ago, Dad did. Yeah. Passed away. Yeah. But, but mom's, you, see, mom had a show last, or a show and a jam, I guess, last night up in Iowa. So mom's still. <laughs> Those churches. Yeah. yeah. Is, is we're, it okay if here. I ask how old is mom now? Well, I was going to say, the reason, one of the reasons we're here, to celebrate Easter with the family. We did this last year and performed on the opera. Okay. This year, it's extra special. We're not only celebrating the risen Savior, but we're also celebrating my mother's 80th birthday. Oh, so, awesome. And she didn't want to have a party in Green Top. She said, I want to come to Nashville. Her grandchildren, her great-grandchild. <laughs> so we're going to be on the Grand Ole Opry tomorrow night. You taking her to Broadway later? <laughs> um, that <laughs> I can picture your mom out at Tootsie's See? with the bachelorette parties. <laughs> We should that, do that would be the best. We should do that. You put a sash on her that says "Birthday Girl," <laughs> you, and oh, they're well. buying her drinks all night. Well, that's that's the thing. Yeah, she's my mother is a crazy fun What's mother without any of the drinks. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. That's she'd a, be on one of those buses dancing. Yes, uh, down Broadway, have yeah. her singing and dancing. Uh-huh. But she wouldn't need the alcohol for that. No, that would she be just. Better. She's always been a really fun mom. That's so, awesome. Uh, well, that's your your version. <laughs> <laughs> and mom always liked you better anyway. So. <laughs> So, I didn't cause all the trouble. Well, that you, might be the reason. You're the golden child. Is why. Right. You can do no wrong. So uh, have you worked up a set list for the Sally Mountain portion uh, of the opera? Oh, yeah, well, we're, huh? We need to it's talk It's all Rhonda about- Vincent songs. <laughs> you know what? I just happen to have it. It's Could you play Missouri one of mine, Bill? Could you play one of my songs, please? 
<laughs> Missouri <laughs> Moon just seemed appropriate at a time like this. <laughs> From Rhonda and the Rage with Darren and Rhonda. Kelly Sutton. I'm Bill Cody. There's a full moon out tonight. All the stars are shining bright. The same. A portion of the Sally Mountain show that will be featured on Saturday's Grand Ole Opry is in our studio this morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're both Grand Ole Opry members, too. Uh, Darren and is here. Jamie, of course, Daly and Vincent is Grand Ole Opry members. On the occasion of your 100th performance, as I recall, Marty Stewart surprised you. He did. At the Grand Ole, at the Ryman Auditorium. And you didn't see it coming? Nothing that day led you to believe something was up had no or idea it was different and after after it was after it was over my wife had known since thanksgiving and was keeping it a secret and i'd gotten sick and i wasn't very nice and she was wanting to call me some really bad names saying you idiot you don't know you're getting ready to become a member of the opry <clears throat> and uh but we made it through but yeah, she and the kids would know, and they talked about it, and I'd walk in the room, and everybody'd shut up. <laughs> and I'm thinking back through this, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, I remember that now. Well, they knew, but I did not know. But the coolest thing is, my mama was with me. That night, we was uh, we had uh, John Carter Cash and Anna, of course, Marty Stewart, and my mom, our, our mother came, and uh, Jamie's daddy, She's JB. My mom too, you know. Yeah, she is your mom. <laughs> <laughs> but we were all on stage together, and when they asked us, mom says, Well, I didn't know. And there I was on my knees thanking the Lord, just crying my eyes out. It was such a blessing. <laughs> yeah. And then Rhonda had maybe the most storied member induction period in the history, the 97 year <laughs> history of the Grand Ole Opry, because after you were invited, a pandemic broke out. 343 <laughs> days later. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's kind of neat, though, the history behind that. And then Darren and I are, the, I guess, the very first ever brother and sister who hold separate Opry memberships. So there's kind of a lot of historical things around that. Kind of neat. You see, I thought she should have done it during the pandemic because the, she could have accepted it with nobody there, and that would have been the, the story <laughs> of, the, of a lifetime. Well, who wants but that? But she wouldn't listen to me. Guess what? Mom came for my induction, too. I know. <laughs> Well, she was there when I was asked. Really? She was in a jam when I was asked. She didn't answer her phone. That's what you were saying. She was actually playing on stage, and she looked down and saw they were calling. She was like, I don't know that. I don't know the number. I'm going to keep playing. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So as a part of the Sally Mountain show, did you ever did, 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 did you dance at any point in time? As dance? A part of we were yeah. always playing the music. We don't know how to dance. Okay. All that's right. not possible. It's it's a cheery you know what the funniest part? That's I went to see, I go see the, the Music City uh, Playboys. Uh, at the Music City Bar and Grill. I love love the traditional country music. And a lady the other night, uh, said, she said, are you going to sing? And I said, well, no, probably not. She goes, I'll get you a couple of drinks to get rid of your inhibitions to sing. <laughs> I'm like, okay. You'll have to drag me to the car, too. <laughs> Because well, I don't drink. So. Songwriter Hall of Famer Whitey Schaefer once wrote in Honky Tonk Amnesia, one's too many and 12 just ain't enough. <laughs> <laughs> Opry Square Dancers, that's the reason I asked. Oh, okay. Yes. Opry Square Dancers go pick up. They don't let off. us dance with them. They're going to no. let you, uh, sometimes they'll drag you out there if you're not careful they backstage. Will, uh, they will never do that. But she, I would embarrass them. <laughs> <laughs> Opry Square Dancers kick off Saturday night show, Riders in the Sky, Darren and Brooke Aldridge, Bill Anderson, Steve Warner, Rhonda and Darren, Vincent and family, Sally Mountain show, kind of recreate that whole thing. Gary Mule Deer, Chris Young is going to be in nice. tomorrow night to awesome. take us home. What are you guys going to play this morning? What well, have you worked up? We used to sing this at sunrise services every every okay. Easter morning. It's one called Three Men on a Mountain. <clears throat> Three. We ready? <laughs> it's been a while. Three men on a mountain. mountain. Up on Calvary, but the man in the middle was Jesus. He died for you and me. Well, the man on the left was a sinner man. The Golden Voice. 
I'm Rhonda Woo! Vincent. Rhonda Vincent, Rhonda and the Rage, Darren Vincent, Daly and Vincent, but the brother and sister Grand Ole Opry member duo is in studio this morning. This is a first in all the years that the two of That's you have right. appeared on the show individually, separately. I think this is the first time we've ever done that. Well, well I know it is. Yeah. It's ever, yeah, first time ever. And they can come to Hiawassee, Georgia, at the Georgia Mountain Fair to see us live. She's actually at our festival down at the uh, Georgia Mountain Fair in September. Mm-hmm. And uh, all these people have seen us on RFD TV, Circle TV, and all that. But they said they want to see us live in concert. So that's where you'll see us together for, probably for the first time in many, many years down at the Hiawassee Fair. How long has Rhonda and Rage been out on the road? Oh, probably 20 years, something you like that. You came in with the furniture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The little Jimmy Dickens. Line. Yeah, I love that. That's awesome. And so, how long have have Daly and Vincent been? We're celebrating our fifteenth year. Is, is this the fifteenth? Yeah. Boy, that passed quickly. It really did. And you Man. know, we got to sing together. They have there's a single that they have on their latest album. That's it's probably right. the first time that we've sang together in many many years. So, That's right. Let's uh, sing some those country. Memories. Yeah, yeah, those memories. Yeah. And also a new song called uh, I can't remember the name of it, but anyway, get the get, <laughs> go to dailyvincent.com and get the CD. <laughs> And I need to go back and read it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, quickly, I mentioned this to you off the air. Uh, there's actually a bluegrass hit on the charts right now with your bass player and band leader, Mickey Harris. Mickey has wow. a new CD commemorating his 20 years as a member of the Rage. So. And this um, thing called Going Home that you guys duet, it's just the best. Well, see, and I, saw, I thought it was I'm Going to Live Right. My mom is saying that all of our lives. So I'm going to live right for to see my Lord. So I thought it was I'm, I'm Going to Live Right. And Mickey joined the band and we started singing that song and talking about it. And, and he said, oh, it's called I'm Going Home. I said, well, no, it's called I'm Going to Live Right. Because <laughs> mom would listen. See, my, my no, parents... paying the bills. <laughs> my, my parents would listen to the Grand Ole Opry. Mom knew she was a, a doctor's assistant. She wrote shorthand okay. for these youngsters out there that might not have heard of shorthand. <laughs> or a codaphone or Rick Rack, you know. <laughs> so she was writing the words down as fast as she could write them. Dad would memorize the melody. So, But Mickey said, no, it's not. It's called I'm Going Home. And I said, well, how do you know? And he said, because my family wrote it. <laughs> His family wrote it. Bill Monroe recorded it. And so Mickey and I have a new duet, and he lets me call it whatever I want. <laughs> but he calls it I'm Going Home. <laughs> my family wrote it. Rhonda, yeah, gosh, his family wrote that song. Awesome. <laughs> And at that point, point in time, this discussion has come to a close. <laughs> Are there any questions? Yeah. R- Rhonda and Darren Vincent on their way to the Saturday Grand Ole Opry on Coffee Country and Cody. Thanks for listening to the Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And please leave us a five-star review. This podcast was produced through the facilities of WSM Radio in Nashville, Tennessee. The hosts of Coffee Country and Cody are Bill Cody, Charlie Matos, and Kelly Sutton. Producer, Eric Markham. WSM General Manager and Director of Content and Programming, J. Patrick Tittle. Copyright 2023. Opry Entertainment Group Holdings, LLC.